the winner's bracket, they'll have two shots at the main event. If they should lose, then the loser. Not eliminated, but starting with no second chances. A key arena. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Cinder. And we're going to see a level one smoke sin from IG. And they make their way into the woods. There's a ward here. Not going to spot this one out, of course, but they do get some aggressive observer wards down. And so as we look at Newbie, how do you feel about their laning stage? Battle. Because I think we both agree, if they have a good start to this game, they are very, very scary later on. But do you think they can get through these lanes intact? Are there any weak points that IG should be looking to attack? Generally, you want to counter out a Spectre in the laning stage if you can. Uh, so if you have a great tri lane or if you had a, have a strong dual lane that you can put against Spectre's lane and, and deny her a lot of farm. Or is it a her, it, or a he, or whatever? I don't even know what that here is, actually. Uh, if you can, you want to counter out Spectre in the lane. But the, the problem for IG is the way they've drafted, they actually, I don't feel like they have that strong lanes. Their two supports are Earthshaker as well as Mirana. <laughs> and then their cores, Tide, Tinker, and, and Lone Druid. There's no real, really amazing lane setup they can, they can put to counter out the Spectre. And even if they were to, they would probably run an aggressive trial lane into it. And Newbie were expecting that. So they're actually putting the Spectre in a dual lane off lane. So let's really quickly look at how Newbie are play placing their lanes in addition to that. So it's How on Spectre together with Banana on Lich in the top lane. In the mid lane, it's going to be Mu playing as his puck. And then finally, towards the bottom, it will be Sunshung on Shadow Shaman together with Xiao Wei on the Doom. And meanwhile, of course, on the dire side, we've got Team IG. They got to sit back and watch today, and now they've just got to win the one series to make it into the winner's bracket. Luo will be on the offlane. Tidehunter mid is going to go YYF on the Lone Druid. We have Faith playing the Earthshaker. Chuan will be your Marana, and that does leave 430 on the Tinker. So I think normally it was Zhou who played the Bear before, before they made the roster switch, right? I believe that was the case. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it, it must have been, right? Who, know, who else would it be? I can't recall. If I, I, by the way, I've played a lot of Lifestealer. I can't recall ever seeing his own Druid. No. It, they might have done it like once or twice, but it's not not something that left me with a with a big impression, at least. So you're probably right. It might have been Joe the, most of the time. So towards the bottom lane, Luo will uh, be playing the Tide here and will be trying to get as much farm as possible uh -oh. out of this dual lane. He's going to be sandwiched a little bit here, but actually managed to stop the the additional pull here from uh, from Newbie, so did accomplish what he was looking for. He needs to be a little bit careful not to be overextending here, but with Sunshine showing that he has other shock, there's no risk of shackles. Yeah, and you can see the lane's actually being ignored right now. Now it's going to walk back towards that. So our mid lane is a Puck versus a Lone Druid, and I've seen this lane go the Puck's way once, and now, oh, now being pursued out a bit by Faith, but he should be okay for now. Just some annoying body blocking. Uh, is fishing. Will it connect? Oh, wow! For long range! They find him. The fish are stacked up a bit. I don't know if they have the follow-up damage, even with that perfect arrow. No leap. That was really beautiful from IG. If there was any sort of follow-up there, they would have gotten Meanwhile, that bottom. Meanwhile, bottom. We've got Shackles on Sunshine. Can he get in range for this? I oh, can't quite do it. Xiao Wei wanted to go. If they had the Shackles, that would be your first blood. Do you think if they hadn't stacked the, the fissure and the arrow that it would have been enough? Or... If he doesn't throw the fissure there, the arrow doesn't hit. Yeah. He actually pushed the hero into the arrow. That's why it was so beautiful there from from IG. Very nicely done. But of course, their mid laner being a lone druid, not really the best hero at rotating in for a gank very early on. I'll send the bear. It'll look pretty. Yeah. Oh, another arrow fishing in the mid lane, but Mu will avoid it. But yeah, and so how are we doing from it? So Lone Druid is 11 and 10 against a 4 and 3 puck. So YWF really doing very well here. He should be winning the lane, but... I, I, saw, this, the I saw this matchup go the other way once, but it was when there was a Lycan on the puck side. Yeah. So you time. can actually just chase down the Lone Druid once you hit level 6 and, and focus the main hero. But, and for the Howl to get yeah, the last hits in the, the lane. The howl, especially. the howl helps a lot. But with this mid lane going the way it is, the puck level 6 is going to come pretty late because there's so many denies coming out from YYF. I mean, it's actually a mystery to me how Mu has more experience than YYF does. Mu has 4 denies on puck and YYF has 12. And he's still, they're still pretty much tied in experience here. Well, I guess the main, it's just, maybe it's just the change to the way the experience works for range heroes from a few patches back. So it is reduced, but not, not nearly as much as it used to be. I feel like in the, the old patch, this puck would be a half level, if not more, behind. I'm not sure. Maybe YYF has been out of the lane a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it could also just be a little bit of movement or missing out on a slight bit of experience. There should be at He's least still looking very Radiant's good in this bottom lane. Tower And IG in attack. general are looking very good when you look at the last hit scores. Ferrari is getting free farm in the safe lane. The off lane tied from Luo actually has the same CS as the safe lane Doom from Xiao 8. 
and he's it's not a one on one even there is a shadow shaman there so Lua is doing a really great job down here and for now i would say definitely definitely the way the early game is going for ig this is what needs to happen the specter has also been completely shut down started off well but now seven cs at four minutes i think if you're newbie you have to rotate specter needs farm in that safe lane yeah, he's getting the levels, which is which is nice, thanks to Lich and I's, but he's not getting too much farm. You at least want to go into the mid-game with something. The phase boots, drum build, we see his common. Vanguard's not out of the question, but he's got to have some items where he just melts. And maybe that's where Newbie looked to just set up easy kills for the Spectre. They'll have the Dream Coil coming on soon for Moo. Doom's going to be available in the next couple minutes as well. And at that point, they can hunt in towards the bottom lane, take out Luo for a first blood if there's nothing doing by then. Arrow fishing top lane, but... Uh, as pointed out earlier, there's a, a Radiant Observer ward spotting this movement from Quan, so not an easy kill for him to find. So yeah, I, I think if he gets shut down, they're going to need to set kills up from around the map, basically to get him on a platter. Yeah, it's pretty impressive that it actually doesn't even matter right now that Chuan isn't hitting these arrows because the lanes are going so well even without his help. Actually, my try in mid lane. Oh, that was not. Chuan really nailed that creep. A very rare mistake from Chuan. They actually leaped pretty much into the creep wave and arrowed it. So, a little bit of a misplay, but what I was getting at. Generally, when you're playing a support run early on, you want to hit those arrows and get some easy kills, so she actually has a major impact. But with all the lanes going IG's way anyway, I think it doesn't even matter that Chuan's ganks are unsuccessful right now. As long as Faith gets to pull and gets to work towards a, a little bit of a higher level and some boots, maybe a soul ring or even the arcane boots, I mean, the, I Chuan could be very poor in this game. They can still manage. The only, I guess, the only thing that he could be doing is he could be stacking. They have a Tinker on their team. They have a Tide. They can really use the Ancients effectively, or the other jungle camps. But we haven't seen any of that from Chuan. Looking through the woods, we see zero stacks on the Dire side. So, it is an opportunity cost for Chuan going for these ganks and not connecting. Puts a little bit of fear into Mu, perhaps. But end of the day, he's losing his lane because he's up against the Lone Druid. And it's basically a 2v1 with the bear. Not so much because Chuan is pressuring him. I want to point out for this mid lane that Mu is... Okay, Chuan is going to leap and steal the rune. Mu is going to not be happy about this. I want to point out, when you're entangled as Puck, which might happen right yeah. now... No. Nice face shift. You can't face shift during entangle. So if they manage to get the root, which lasts for, what is it, three seconds on heroes, then that's a pretty long time to set up an arrow. And tangles are the only type of ability you cannot face shift during, of course, in addition to stuns and silences, right? But <laughs> that kind of speaks for itself. Apart from Morphling, who can apparently morph through absolutely almost everything. Well, well, we'll see if they get it open. For now, he's rotated that top, so. There is kill potential. That's why it was weird before, because why have actually got an entangle? And, and it, then just Chuan did an arrow. Easy first he, he hesitated, then he leaped into the leaped creep into wave. into the creep wave and arrowed a creep. Yeah. So. I, I mean, maybe that creep, you know, I don't know. Well, he got the last hit, I think, so. He's getting rich. No, he didn't. He did something he, bad to his he family, didn't perhaps. Get the, last. No. <laughs> the creep's dead. All good creeps die eventually, so. For now, though, they'll stand strong, but they are winning their lanes, you have to say. The Tide's 31 and 3 is an awfully tight. They are going on the bottom, though. They have the Doom. They can haunt in if needed. Oh, no, sorry. No haunt yet. He's only level 5, but they don't need it. They find the kill on their own, and oh, that's a, a great start here for Nubi. It's also going to meet fast wards up, at which point I think we'll see some pressure towards this bottom tower. Sangshan is already level 5, and we're only 7 minutes in. This is a pretty... Pretty amazing stat, actually, that they have. They get first blood in 68% of their matches. That's a really good stat for. Uh, now, we, we were talking about this with K-pop Tosis, and I believe the the additional follow-up numbers. Teams that get first blood win. I think it was 55% of their games. 58% of the game. So. First blood is important, but obviously there's a lot of games where teams still go on and come back. And the, the thing about that stat is, it will often be the, if in really uneven matchups, it will generally be the better team that gets the first blood. Yep. So they would have won anyway. So yeah. it's a little hard to, to say what, what factors actually play in, but I'm not going to argue with first blood being a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's some crazy trades like a Roche or a Tower and yeah. multiple hero kills. And Generally, you come out on top. And I actually think for Newbie, it was a good thing that the first blood went to the Shadow Shaman. Often, you put emphasis on the cores getting first blood, so they get towards their core items very early on. But with Sanshan getting it early, he's going to get his Arcane Boots now. Like you said, almost level 6, 8 minutes in on the Shadow Shaman. Safe lane here together with Doom. He is going to have a really huge impact. If Doom had it, they would have had the oh. mech a little earlier, but they won't need it yet. So There's another think. arrow searching from Tron, but once again, just unable to connect. IG just not quite on the same wavelength. Shall we? TPing top, he does have a smoke. He will now smoke and head towards the mid lane. There's, there's no Doom, Doom is up yet, in five. But five seconds and we got it. Well, I don't even know Lone if they can kill YYF. Lone Druid's not really a TP support. I have to say, I think he's the best carry against Doom in terms of, outside of maybe Wraith King, where you Doom him, and then you're like, oh wait, this bear has 1300 health and 10 armor. 
And Doom is not going to chunk through too much of that, but they might go anyway. Yeah, the, go the good news play. here for Newbie is that Shaker, they don't know this, but Shaker actually doesn't have mana for TP Fisher. They also have Haunt. This could be big for Spectre, shall we? Looking for the opening, he's going to march in, and now they Haunt, and they Doom, and they Coil as well. They're throwing three ultimates right away this way. Now the Dagger coming through, he's going to break the Coil. That was close to the There is and the trade. Team. The backup's here. In comes Big Bad Daddy Tide. Finds one, wants to finish off Hound. Hasn't done it yet, though. One more clunk, and down he goes. So in the end, it's a one for one. Is it worth it to, to lose your Spectre? Use three Dyer's ults just to kill off the one Oh, they traded it for Ravage and Kill. I would say this is a fairly even trade. Maybe favoring IG a little bit, since if we count ultimates, more were used here from Newbie. And that, that kill might have not even happened Dyer's if Shaker was actually able to attack. TP Fisher immediately. But he was out of mana at the time Newbie went for the king, so good timing on that. He manages to Dyer's secure that. And, okay, it's a, it's a win for Newbie. Let's put it that way. They just got a tier 1 tower bottom because of Tide's TP mid. The other thing is this means 430 is safe for the next, I guess you call it a minute or so at this point. Oh, as I say that, he's getting dove. How is really Dyer's committing to this one. The laser's already been thrown attack. out. And, well, he can't quite get the kill, but... It means boots of travel for Tinker, pretty much guaranteed at this point. Whereas if you go on him top lane, you might be able to slow him down. And to me, he's the most important here on IG's lineup to slow down. Yeah, that's one weakness Newbie have had so far is that they haven't had any chance at really chat. They can't challenge the top lane in the beginning. Their, their hero composition just doesn't work for an aggressive time at all. So, Farrar will be getting a lot of space as a result of that. How, however, is, is coming back, I think. He's got 27 CS and an assist. Considering how bad he was looking early on, he's, he's getting somewhere now. What do you think about his skill build? So, in most cases, we see Spectres getting one or two points in Dagger, and then they max Desolate for the haunt potential. He's maxing out the Dagger. And I am not sure what the reasoning is for this, but it's really interesting to see because this is the old build that pretty much no one uses anymore. I guess the one good thing is he is pretty under farmed, right? So all he's got is a bracer, 30 CS, 11 minutes. So, I mean, that's pretty awful. Two, three CS a minute as a specter is not where you want to be. And with this build, it means he can offer a little bit more without having to get in close. The Desolate is a ton of damage, but you also have to be in harm's way to really take advantage of it. It does pass through to your illusions, but they don't generally get off that many right clicks until they, they get some more items, so well, we'll see. But I guess it's in some ways just the safer build and like the kill secure type build. See. For now, they push. Oh, he's putting pressure on Tron Dyer's here. Bottom Getting tower pretty hard, actually. Attack. Tron needs to be careful. If Hal Lady realizes that Tron is alone up here, he might actually try to go for this kill. He could dive him right now with a dagger and just chase him down at the tower, I think. We might see him do it. And they're going to show three yeah. mid. They're showing three mid and one bottom. He could at least force a TP right now, Hal. With the backup come. Xiao has got a neck in. And Nigeria about to get caught out. The Doom is always going to once again on the low Druid. Fade has a Fissure available. He'll let him fly and unfortunately falls before he can make his way out. Lone Druid driven off the fight. Now they focus the Spirit Fair. They oh, they're going to the get... Oh, they got it. They get the Spirit Fair. That's an extra 300 gold going the way. And now a Chain Frost. A Coil as well. All of it for 430. There's Ravage Mana now and he'll let it go, but it might just be too late. Well, Arrow connects on Hal, but they just can't get in with the wards here. The backup, they might go Dyer's for the bear a second time. Tower is secured. Fallen. And now Hal gets trapped in the wards. <laughs> he, he phases out, but he had a few seconds of panic. Now it's the bear who's trapped in. Uh, know, they're going to kill him a second time. Oh my no god, way. they kill it again. No way. No, this can't happen, IG. Oh. Uh, Did two heroes, or a bear and a hero, just both get stuck in a ward? They waltzed into the wards, <laughs> and then they just decided to chill. And they wait for their phases oh to go down. What a great turnaround there from Newbie, though. Just getting the tower is already great. Getting one, driving the lone drone off, killing the bear, that's a bonus. But getting the tinker and the tower and the spirit bear and the shaker, that's and huge. one of the kills was on the specter even, and they didn't even lose their own tower. So I too were really trying to force the issue there and weren't successful. And if you manage to get past this this point in the game as newbie, you're going to be looking very very good going into the mid game. We talked about how good specter is in this particular matchup so far. You need single target damage to deal with the Spectre mid late game. And it's not there yet for IG. Tinker will eventually get there if he gets enough farm, but he needs to be careful with his farming as Hal can always catch him. Now together with the Doom, it's a very easy kill. And in addition to that, the Lone Druid who will generally be building for Radiance first. Yes, the bear hits pretty hard, but you're still looking for that second item before you really cha challenge the Spectre. Yeah, and the Radiance isn't that close either. We're looking at a Lone Druid who didn't rush the Midas. He's got 2200 gold with phase boots up on the on the bear. So he's still gonna farm for quite a while just to get relics. That into Radiance and with the start Nubia have had, they've already got a mech. We might even see Xiaowei consider a pipe to you're already up against Tinker, right? And at that point Radiance feels a bit underwhelming, I would say. 
And a pipe would be really good for the You can't get the time to the it's, it's a good play. Tinker in addition, in addition to that, it's a great choice. Now YYF and the rest of IG up here will try to, to get this tower. At least kind of thing over the walls. But are they after all? It's only Chain Frost that's on cooldown. Here's the Doom on Tulu. Oh, oh, he's driven back for now. How on the chase? Brings him down with a few more Desolate Strikes. They can't find anyone else just yet. The Coil comes out. That will isolate YYF. Easily dealt with. And as soon as they haunt, IG just can't do anything. Their only way to turn these fights really is Ravage. Like you fissure, and that's fine, but they would just tank through to keep on running forward. I just, if they can't get off of the Ravage, I don't care. Now 430 might get caught. Blink! Silence will find him! And now they look for more. Oh, the Moo is doing so much work. He's got an orb. He doesn't even need it. One more right click. This might just be a GG already. 15 minutes in. Newbie up by 8k gold. They've been steamrolling. It was a tough match versus Titan. 2-1. to one, But they cruised their Navi 2-0. And, and now looking like they might take game one of this best of three. What a run it would be for them to be in danger of elimination and then potentially straight into the winner's bracket after the end of the bubble race. The type of performance we're seeing from Nubia right now looks like a team that's in contention for we, top, top four, if not top two right now. The I, way they've played the last few games has been phenomenal. I believe both you and I had Nubia in our top five predictions going into the event, which was not by any means a, a bold choice. They had just been playing that well before the event. But Nubia that showed up in the group stage, I think the B01 format just didn't quite suit them as much. And, there's more, a little bit more randomness involved with that, but you see when they get BO3s and they've got a chance to warm up and get into their comfort zone, they are a well-oiled machine. Yeah, and especially to, today for me, Mu has stood out as an amazing big player so far. In this game, this game is no exception. He's 5-0 in his puck. He's been setting up everything the way he should be in these team fights. And, and the rest of the team just followed through. And let's remember, he had a, a rough matchup mid. He's up against Lundgren. He was losing in CS and denied <laughs> He was heavily, losing his lane. It doesn't matter. <laughs> He's still making things happen around the map. Maybe you just need to put two heroes against this guy. But that's what Navi did in the last <laughs> game when he went 10-0. <laughs> <laughs> what did you uh, do? Yeah, oh and, 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 and you know, a lot of people would have said 430 is the one you have to be worried about. But they did ban him out. Now an arrow mid. This could be big if they can ice him We'll start with the mark, it's only level one laser that they can throw. They combine it with the fissure, and now he's phased him. He drops the coil, then the haunt! The turnaround may come. No way! Oh he's my He's still God. surviving through it. The he's chain frost, he bounces. <laughs> it. It's a travesty for IG. Driven out. Well, it looks that Luo will escape, but they can't even get a stinking puck. They just don't have oh the damage. And GG, God. they've it's had enough. Nubia are one win away from the winner's bracket at Key Arena. And they made it look easy. This is IG we're talking about. Defending TI2, well, not defending, but TI2 champions. A team that steamrolled through the early stages of the groups. They're in danger now, Sind. What do you do? I just think this Spectre pick tied their draft together perfectly. The early game lanes from IG were all working out. We were talking about they're, they're winning their safe lane, they're winning their mid lane.